Hey guys, Fox Protocol Mining here, coming at you with a new video from the Fox Den. Guys, in today's video, I am going to very quickly cover how to connect to MinerPool.org and specifically their Flux Pool. I'll also cover how to connect to the Flux Solo Pool using the Mini Z Miner for NVIDIA cards. Uh, the reason I'm going to be using that miner is it is the most efficient miner currently versus G Miner and LOL Miner. If you guys are connecting with an AMD card, you will probably want to use G Miner as the LOL Miner is still a few months out of date. Alright guys, moving forward. So you're going to come to this page, which is minerpool.org, and it's going to specifically ask you which pool you want to connect to. Uh, you would just click the blue button associated with that. Uh, if you guys connect to the pool, uh, this is going to be the connection screen you see by clicking this blue button back here. That says connect, it'll pull up. It's going to ask you to select a stratum, which is the location closest to you. I'm US based, so I'll be using that for this example. Uh, pay close attention to the port numbers here, because that will determine how you connect. Uh, 2032 is the pool mining, low difficulty. 2033 is high difficulty, meaning if you're using a single card or maybe two cards, you probably want to connect to the low difficulty port. Uh, if you guys are more professional and you're using an actual rig, you'll want to connect to 2033. More power, higher difficulty. Guys, if you're trying to mine solo, you will get the same screen on the solo pool. However, the ports will be different. However, same, pro same premise. 2057 is the low difficulty port, and 2058 is the high difficulty port. Guys, if you're mining with a single GPU on solo, I would not recommend that. It's going to take you forever to find a block. But if you are, then 2057 is your port, 4 rigs, 2058. Also, you're going to see Mini-Z down here, along with LOL Miner and G Miner, along with an example of configuration. So you want to click on Mini-Z, and you're going to click Download, if you don't already have it. And this is going to take you to the Mini-Z page to download the miner. You'll want to get the Windows script, if that is applicable to you, or the Linux script here. Uh, and you're going to want to click Download. Guys, when you unlock this zip file, it's going to ask you for a password, and that password is mini Z, capital Z, and that will unlock your file after you download. Now, after you guys have downloaded and brought uh, the files on your computer, I generally recommend creating a folder uh, that you can unzip into. That way, you've got it, everything organized, uh, like mine's test miners here. So you're going to have the mini z application file and you're also going to have the mini z dash g u i file this is the one you want because this is going to be an edible file keep in mind guys when you first install this your windows is going to go nuts it's going to tell you it's quarantining these files if you want the miner to work you will need to ignore that and give this miner permission to operate on your computer otherwise it's just not going to work when we double click on this, it's going to pop up this little window here, and it's going to ask you some things. The server port. So it's going to ask you the server that you want to mine to, and the port. And guys, if we go back to our connect file here, it is going to tell you the server right here, which is the same for both, and the ports. So this is where you draw that information from. So in here, I have us connected to the Flux pool, which is flux-usminerpool.org, port 233. Uh, if you guys were doing solo mining, you would effectively be putting in the same server, just EU or Asia, if that's applicable to you, but the port numbers would be different. So please pay attention to which port you are connecting to, because if you're not looking in the right place or things like that, you might think that maybe you're not hashing on the right pool. So it is important to make sure that you input the correct port for pool versus solo. Guys, it's also going to ask you for a wallet address. This will be the address that this miner submits work to. So this needs to be your address. You'll also notice that it starts with T1. Now why is that important? That is because that is a native flux address. These are all addresses connected to the pool. You can see they all start with T1. If your address does not start with T1, that is not a valid Flux address, and your connection will be refused, and you'll be scratching your head as to why you're unable to connect to the pool. 
guys, you can also name your worker here. This is just what your worker's name will be when it connects to the pool. And then you also have the password uh, with minorpool.org. You cannot just have it set to nothing or X because then you cannot change your minimum payout on the pool. So you need to make sure that you change this to something. I just used 2033 as an example. It can be any letter number combination that you want. Uh, this just gives you the ability to change your minimum payout on the pool, either to three flux or a million flux, whatever you want that to be. Uh, once you guys have this configured, make sure that this box is unchecked because this pool does not support SSL. You're just gonna hit the start button and it's going to pop up. Now, I don't have a GPU configured on this computer, so it is not going to load properly. However, if you did have a GPU, you would start mining here. If you get a red error that says connection not authorized, then you have an invalid address and you need to make sure that you have a T1 address. If you get a connection refused, then you will most likely did not prevent Windows from blocking certain files that the miner needs to run. And you need to go to your quarantine folder and you need to allow this file access to the internet. Otherwise, it just won't be able to connect. Those are really the two biggest issues with Mini-Z is making sure that you get that initial connection set up. Uh, once you have that done and you're using the correct wallet address, you should by now be hashing away. Uh, and then you would want to use your MSI Afterburner to get everything rolling. Now, I understand the setup might be a little bit different for our Hive OS users and such, but that will be a separate video. So this is for our Windows users, guys. Alrighty. But that is it. That is it in a nutshell, guys. I hope this worked out for you. I hope this answered some of your questions and kept things pretty straightforward and quick. But, but this is the Fox Den, guys, and I am signing off.